As many of you know, a new update is coming to D&D very soon. A fresh look at the 5e rules in an all new set of core rulebooks. And aside from just reworked mechanics, we're starting to see some of the awesome new artwork that's included in these books. Personally, I'm most excited about the new artwork for the dragons. Specifically, the black dragon, with its semi-exposed skull and twisted horns. A design that seems to take inspiration from one specific line in the 2014 Monster Manual. It goes a little something like this. As a black dragon ages, the flesh around its horns and cheekbones deteriorates, as though eaten by its acid. So maybe they're not quite as immune as they would have you think. So today I'm going to be painting a mini based on this new art. Speaking of the mini, with all of this in mind, I happen to have just the model. The Elder Black Dragon by Rescale Miniatures, formerly known as Lord of the Print. This mini has been sitting on my shelf for ages, probably almost a year now, waiting for the right time to be painted. And with this new inspiration, I think that time's now. This mini gets everything right, from the gaunt webbing to the streamlined skull-like face. The horns even have the twist that the 2024 design has. There's just one issue. This miniature's horns point backwards, and D&D Black Dragons have iconically always had forward-facing horns. So how are we going to fix that? Luckily for us, this model has been 3D printed, specifically using PLA plastic. What that means is that the machine melts plastic layer by layer to create our model. And if it was melted once, surely we can melt it again. I'm going to crank my hairdryer as hot as it can go and focus it on these areas of the horns. Ah, shit, that's hot. I'm going to focus it on the areas of the horns, grab some tweezers, and carefully, once the plastic is just malleable enough, We'll twist the horns around and hold them in place until they cool. I didn't actually know if that would work or not, so that's awesome. Now that our dragon's looking a little more lore accurate, it's time to paint. The very first thing I'm going to do is a dark grey dry brush over the face and all of the scaled areas. Really anywhere except for the webbing on his spine and wings. I'm going for a dark grey here because with all of the different greys and greens we'll end up having on this model, I really need the body to still read as black. This dry brush will be heavier on the face and horns and more subtle all over the body, just picking out some edges and raised details, similar to the concept art, so that this doesn't end up looking more like a grey dragon. Now we'll step up to a lighter grey, hitting the face all over again to start getting that brighter bleached bone look, but also picking out a few of the scales that are facing upwards or would be catching a little more light such as the top of the front legs, the joints on the wings, and these little bits around his chest area. Alongside the 2024 Black Dragon design, we're also going to be taking a look at Rushak. I think that's how that's pronounced? Rushak is from Fizban's Treasury of Dragons and sports a similar exposed skull, but has some incredible, vibrant colours on the undersides of his wings and the webbing between his spines. Full black looks great in the artworks, but can get a little bit boring if we do that on a mini of this size. So we'll be taking inspiration from Rashak just to give a bit more of a pop of colour and something a bit more interesting on the mini. Next up is some ochre tones. Taking inspiration from many Black Dragon designs, but specifically Rashak, we'll be introducing some warmth to this section of plates that run down the dragon's torso and belly. I'm being careful not to introduce any brightness here as I don't want this to be a focal point. I'm just adding some colour to break up the blacks and give some additional interest to the model. So I'm making sure to keep a similar brightness to the blacks around it, otherwise it might end up competing with our bright greens later on. Now we can move on to one of our focal points of this model, the face. Time for some traditional layering, and we'll just be moving through the same greys that we used for our dry brushing but pushing up to an even brighter highlight. And this is just the first step of the face. I do plan to come back in with a few more dry brushes, over brushes and washes later on, so I'm not afraid to go almost too bright here for now. We start this layering with our darkest deep grey, leaving a small amount of black between the face and the root of the horns. We then come in with a 50-50 mix of deep grey and ash grey for our first bump in brightness. This should match our grey dry brushing we've done so far. And finally, picking out smaller and smaller areas, we come in with pure ash grey on all of the brightest points, and use this to add some interesting highlight areas on the face making sure to pick out any raised or edge details, such as the eyebrows, the nose, and the cheekbones. And in some areas, I'm doing a rough stipple between the black and the grey areas on the head. Now, this contrast is looking good, but our dragon does look like he's ready for a kiss concert. So we're going to go ahead, come in with a few additional steps to dial some of that back, 
and closer to our final look. This will start with an overbrush of pure black on the tips of the horns and in the areas between the horns and the head where the skin might be a little bit thicker. Following that I'll do more of a dry brush on the lower jaw to dial it down compared to the rest of the face. This addition of the black dry brush helps to blend out a few of our transitions here but also helps to reintroduce some actual black to the face of our black dragon. Now I'm going to take up a moment to mix a wash of black speed paint, speed paint medium and water. And I'm going to use this to dull down the brightness of the bone and add some subtle recess shading to all of these areas. This goes all over the face and horns and I make sure to come in and suck up any areas of wash that are pooling a little too much. With our overbrushing and washes dry, we can now come back in and reintroduce some of our brightest highlights. And now I'm being careful not to overdo the brightness as we're moving closer to the finished look. A thin down mix of ash grey and matte white now gets stippled and edge highlighted onto a few key areas. I added some highlights to the face near his snout and eyes, as well as some stippling in that transition area to match the speckled look of the concept art. And I follow this up with a scratchy edge highlight on the horns, and I almost dot this on using the side of the brush to give a more jagged line. Next up I want the subtlest of differences between the face and the horns. The horns should have at least a tiny bit of warmth to them, as they're not directly exposed to the acid, so they wouldn't be entirely bleached white. So I mixed an additional wash of soft tone thinned with plenty of speed paint medium and water. This should be just subtle enough to introduce a hint of that warmer bone colour to the horns, but without completely changing their look. And with all that done I come in with a final dry brush of some light grey to complete the face. It took a little bit of back and forthing, but the face is done, and I'm really happy with the final look. Now it's time to tackle some of the other interesting areas on the model, specifically the webbing on the wings and spines which we're going to make a vibrant green, taking inspiration once again from Rushak. And for this I think I'm going to use some sponges. I've never really used sponging outside of weathering but I think they'll give a really nice dithered blend as we move through our levels of brightness. Starting out we'll come in with Angel Green, a nice dark green that should be the perfect subtle change in colour from our black and be a great starting point to build up vibrance. Then we'll move on to a brighter green skin and continue to sponge this on making sure to cover slightly less area than our dark green. And finally we'll move on to our brightest colour, Rainforest Green. A vibrant acidic green that will be a really bright punch to this otherwise quite dark and desaturated mini. Now it's just a matter of repeating these same steps on the underside of the wings. And unfortunately this is where I have a little bit of trouble with the sponges. The sponges work great on the smaller webbing of the tail, but here it's really hard to get good coverage with the sponge I have. It's just really difficult to cover more than a centimetre or so with each little dab of paint. But I stuck at it until eventually I had a coat of all of our greens and it looks pretty damn good, although our rainforest green isn't quite as bright as I want it to be. To remedy this I'll do a quick hatching and a rough blend using a thin down coat of rainforest just with a regular brush, before doing one final pass with the sponge to reintroduce that texture. For the remaining webbing on the head and legs I wanted to see if another approach might have worked better, so I tried stippling on the same series of greens. This looks very similar but did leave me with larger spots of colour rather than the nice dithered blend that the sponges gave me. Overall I think these greens look really cool on this model, and if I was to do it again I would absolutely still use the sponges on the smaller details, but I might try instead for an airbrush or an overbrush on larger details like the wings. Starting with the eyes I'll come in with a thin coat of a light purple around the eye socket, followed by a purple speed paint in the most saturated areas. Then with a coat of white, a dot of bright magenta and a final vertical dash of black, the eyes are done. For the base I throw down some very thinned down greens and browns all over the rocks just to add some depth and colour under what will eventually be greys. Speaking of which I'll come in now with an overbrush of a few coats of deep grey followed by ash grey all over the base and I'm making sure to have this a little bit brighter than the legs and the body to help the darker colour of the dragon stand out atop its base. For these little acid pools I did a bit of a rough wet blend on the model with some of our various greens that were left on the palette. And I added in a little bit of army painter oozing vomit just to get a nice mixture of darker and brighter greens with a little bit of texture from that effect paint that all got coated with a heavy layer of gloss varnish. And with a final lick of black around the base rim our ancient black dragon is complete.
overall, I had a ton of fun painting this model, and it was really nice to get some awesome inspiration to finally get this mini painted. Who knew it would take an entire update of D&D just for me to paint a dragon. Overall, I'm super happy with the outcome. The blacks and the greens go really well against that awesome exposed skull look of the face. These new 2024 designs are some of my absolute favorites. And I really can't wait to get my hands on the new books so that I can look through all of the artwork that's in them. But let me know, what's your favorite artwork that you've seen so far from the 2024 edition, and how happy are you with the updates to the rules that we know so far? Overall, I'm really excited. The rules seem fun and interesting, throwing in some new stuff to the game that we already love, even if there's a couple of classes that might still be a little hit or miss. But none of that is going to change the fact that I have such a blast painting these minis, and even more fun when I get to put them on the table. Speaking of putting them on the table, stay tuned. You might get to see some of that a little sooner than you might have thought. Please consider liking the video if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to see more of my hobbying in the future, from printing to painting to fun experimental things like this dragon. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a good one.